Hi guys, welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to be talking to you about long exposure. This is one of my favourite forms of photography and I know a lot of you love it too. What is long exposure and how do you do it? They're the two things we're going to be discussing in this video. Long exposure is actually really easy to understand. It's as simple as this. Your shutter opens up on your camera and then your camera lets in more light. As the light comes into the camera, this is gonna have some changes to your photo. See, anything that moves around in the photo is gonna become blurred. Anything that's completely still stays in focus. So what do you need for long exposure? There are three important things that you need to get. The first one is a camera, the second one is a tripod, and the third one is an ND filter. Now a tripod is absolutely paramount. You've got to get one. So if you're looking for a tripod, I've put a link down below in the description for a nice budget tripod, which will do the job. If you've got a little bit more money and you want a splashy cash, I'll also put a premium tripod down there for you to check out as well. Now what's an ND filter? Well, if you don't know, it's basically sunglasses for your camera. So imagine you take a picture on a bright day and it's too bright for your camera sensor to deal with. You put on an ND filter onto the camera and this darkens down the image, which means that you can get a longer exposure and you can let more light into the camera. The plus side of this means that you can take a picture for longer with the shutter open and this is gonna make more of a blurred background. Okay, time for long exposures. When you first get to the area that you're taking a long exposure in, you need to check out the composition. This is so important. Make sure that you get the composition that you're looking for and then safely put down the tripod on some flat ground. If the ground's uneven, then you're potentially going to have your equipment falling over and that could cost you a lot of money. Now, step one is to put your camera on a two second timer. The reason for this is if you press your camera shutter button as you take the photo, you're gonna get something called camera shake, also known as bad blur. Now this is not the lovely blur that you get in the background from a long exposure. This is gonna create blur throughout your whole image, which means it's gonna be out of focus. And this is gonna ruin the whole shot. Step two is to choose the camera mode. You've got three main camera modes on your camera. They are manual, shutter priority, and aperture priority. I shoot in manual, which gives me complete control over everything in my camera. But if you're new to this, you're probably gonna to wanna to start with shutter priority mode or aperture priority. Step number three is to choose your shutter speed. This is how long you want your shutter to stay open. Now, if you're shooting in really bright conditions like a sunny day, you're gonna to wanna to stick on your sunglasses. Well, not yours, with the cameras. The ND filter will need to be put on the end of your lens, and this is gonna darken down the image to enable you to get a longer exposure. Now the shutter speed that you're gonna decide on using will be dependent upon how much you wanna blur out the background. Choosing the shutter speed is a personal preference. By keeping the shutter speed open longer, you're gonna blur the image more. By keeping it open less time, you're gonna blur it less. So it's really a creative decision that you need to make. Do you want it blurred more or do you want it blurred less? Step number four. If you are shooting in manual mode, you're gonna to need to know more than just shutter speed. This is because no longer is the camera doing some of the decisions for you, you're doing everything yourself. You need to know about three things and these make up exposure or light. That's ISO, aperture, and shutter speed. Let's start with ISO, shall we? You wanna keep your ISO in your camera as low as possible. Around about 100 to 200 is perfect. This is because the quality of your image is gonna be better with a low ISO. If you push that ISO right up, you're gonna introduce noise and grain into the image, and this is gonna make your images not particularly good. Aperture is how much of your image that you want in focus. So if you set your aperture low at say about f.4 or f2.8, then you're going to be getting something called depth of field. This means that the subject that you focus on will be in focus. 
but the background will be out of focus. Whereas if your aperture number is higher, say around about f8 to f11, then most of your image is going to be in focus. So once again, this is personal preference. What are you focusing on and do you want everything in focus? Finally, how long you keep the shutter open affects how blurred the image is going to be. So using manual mode is about getting these three things working together. ISO, shutter speed and aperture. Now if you'd like to know more about this subject, I've actually made a playlist which gives you three short videos explaining aperture, shutter speed and ISO. If you want to check that out, just click the link above my head right now. Step five is nailing focus. This is where you want to use your manual focus to really make sure that everything is pin sharp. You can use the camera's lens to autofocus and in a lot of instances, this will do a good job, but I don't like to leave this to chance. I know that when I use manual focus, I can get the exact results that I want. Zoom into your subject by pressing the zoom button on the back of your camera. Make sure that when you get into the subject, that you turn your focus ring on your lens and this will ensure that you get this perfectly in focus. But do remember that you want your aperture number to be higher because this makes sure that most of your image is then in focus. Okay, so now it's time to take your photo. What I usually do is capture a few images first and these are just like test shots to ensure that I'm happy with the results that I'm getting. When you've got this dialed in, then you're good to go ahead and take your photo. Now the steps that we've gone through in this video can be applied to other forms of long exposure. So if you're looking at doing light trails or maybe moving clouds, you can use the guide that I've given you in this video and get some really good results. You might just need to tweak that shutter speed a bit, or if you're shooting in dark conditions, make sure that your ISO is a bit higher. And of course, if it's not bright outside, don't stick on your camera's sunglasses. Okay guys, the so question of the day today is what kind of long exposure are you most attracted to? Share with me your interest in the comments section below, and then we can talk about this after the video. Now, if you're a beginner and you're watching this video, you might be interested in a video that I made the other day. This is how to make money as a beginner photographer. So if you want to check that out, I'll put a link at the end of the video in just a minute. You can check that out and watch that after this. I want to thank you guys for watching today's video. If you're new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button and then hit the notification bell right after. Thanks once again, guys. I hope whatever you're doing today, you have an awesome day and I'll see you in the next video.